what, what the mate is talking about. What's up, family? Three black teenagers found themselves in handcuffs after they was arrested at Washington National Mall in D.C. for not fighting, not cursing somebody out, not jaywalking, not robbing somebody, not stealing, not killing anybody, not even spitting on the ground for selling water. They put these boys in handcuffs for selling water. Now, granted that selling anything on the mall is against the law without a permit, you gotta ask yourself, would they have done that if those boys would have been white? If you are perfectly honest with yourself and you ain't no sucker, it's no way possible you can come to any conclusion other than no. It's no other answer you can come to because you know damn well when it comes to legal matters in this country, the United States of America, there's a huge disparity in how they treat people of one ethnic group versus the other. And also, when they're dealing with kids of different ethnic groups. You know damn well, if those had been little white girls with ponytails selling Girl Scout cookies, selling some lemonade, they wouldn't have put them in cuffs. So why did they do it to these kids? See, this is why I make these videos. This is why these type of videos are necessary because these bastards have to be put on blast. You got to call them on their BS. You can't let them make it. You can't ever let them make it. You can't get tired of fighting. You can never get tired of fighting. You can get tired of, well, I'll put it like this. Yes, you can get tired of fighting. You can get tired of hearing these type of stories, but you can't get tired of seeking justice. You can never get tired of justice. Never get tired of justice. And that's why I am. I hate like hell every day. And it's not one. It's not two. It's not three. It's easily a dozen stories or more every single day where people are being violated, where people of color, especially civil rights are being violated, human rights, rights of just common decency are being violated. And so I have to pick which of these stories I am going, am I going to cover? Like, what story can I cover that I can bring some attention to and also that I can be informative about? Because I don't like just bringing a story. I want to make sure that I give you some information, some news you can use before I get out of here. The photo was snapped by Tim. What's the guy name? Tim. Um. Tim Krepp, yeah, K-R-E-P-P. -P. He was a tour guide who was on the scene. He had the presence of mind to take the photo because he, like everybody else, thought that, that was pretty over the top, so to speak. He thought it was pretty severe that they would take those type of steps to reprimand those kids for selling water. Again, y'all, an act of decency, an act of trying to do what's right or doing what's right, an act of earning a decent living. That's all they were doing. 
and, and you got to think, you got you to think this too. It's so many kids out there who aren't doing the right thing, who are trying to get over, who are just sitting at home being lazy, playing games and all of that kind of stuff. And here these kids are, they've been taught if you want to get ahead in life, you got to work. And they've been taught play by the rules too, but Man, I've been to the Washington Mall several times, and these people just pop up all the time selling stuff. They can't possibly control all the people who are out there without permits selling stuff on the side of the road. When I was out there for Barack's inauguration, people was spontaneously selling things. Like, oh, you know what? I think I can sell this. You know what? I'm going to sell this back. People just setting up shop all over the place. So everybody are not permitted that you see selling stuff on the mall. Everybody don't have a permit. It's just that they choose, they pick and choose who they want to go after. Who they pick and choose. Even in Vegas. There's so many people up and down the Vegas Strip that don't have permits in New York City who don't have permits. And of course a number of them do, but many of them don't. And I have yet to see anybody arrested in New York City or Vegas. I'm sure it happens, but I've been out there for several hours in one day and never seen an arrest made by the police. I've never seen them arrest a vendor, ever. But they picked these little black boys to arrest. You know why they did it? They did it because they could. They did it because they want to get them used to feeling afraid of the police. They want them to fear the police. But what they don't get is that they also are making them angry with the police. Most of them will grow up to just dislike the police, but still abide by the laws. Some of them are gonna grow up to kill the police. Some of them are going to grow up to be angry and act on that anger. And that's the sad part because these little rogue-ass cops that are out there, they're probably not going to be the one that get it. You ever notice that when a cop gets killed, usually people from all backgrounds come forward and say how great this particular cop was. Now, they talk about how great this cop was aside, aside from policing. You just talk about what he did in the community, how he worked with other kids and of different backgrounds, how he was a mentor, all of this stuff. It seems like the good ones. I know some of y'all say there are no good ones, but I, I'm here to attest that there are. I got friends and family members that I know that are riders that I, I personally have relationships with that would, wouldn't do no stupid shit like that. Wouldn't have never done, would have never done something like that. Would have never participated in that. In fact, if one of their partners had put it in their mind to do it, they would have discouraged it. I know officers, I got a family member who's used to work it, you know, in the drug enforcement, for DEA, and he see a cat on the corner trying to move a little low work, whatever, and he's like, man, what you doing out here? make them throw it away, crack, crush it on the ground or whatever, and make them get off the block. Because he understood that he didn't want to ruin this guy's life. Guy just getting started with life. He's 17 years old, 15 years old, 19 years old. He don't want to ruin the guy's life. So he would give him a chance. Man, get your ass off this corner and go do something else. Now, if you try to embarrass me and you keep coming out here, then I'm going to have to do what I got to do. But he would give him an opportunity to straighten up before he would just haul him off into jail and put that jacket on their back. And that's that's to me is what that to me is what like policing should be. That's that's community policing to me. And that's actually what happens a lot of times in communities that are not poor. This happens oftentimes in communities where these officers work at, you know, in the same communities where they live. 
you know, they don't treat the people in the community they live that way. They oftentimes give the youngsters a break. Now, they try to handle these kids this certain way because they do have a disdain for black and brown children. They have a ma ma major disdain for them. Now, what these suckers should have done is they should have walked up to those youngsters and said, look, y'all know y'all got to have a permit to be out here selling water, right? And the youngsters probably would have been responded like, uh, yes, sir, or maybe they would have been a little bit in disingenuous and said something like, no, we didn't really know. In any event, cop could have easily gave him a warning and said, okay, okay, y'all get on out of here. Now, I'm not saying that the cop didn't give him a warning. That could be the case, but I doubt it. Normally, the cop give you a warning, especially if you ain't up to some, you ain't, you ain't like some hardened criminal. The cop give you a warning, you out there doing something you know you're not supposed to be doing. Okay, he caught me. Okay, let me get on out of here before he catch me again. Man, that's how it is. So, I would tend to say that if those kids had gotten a warning, they would have went on about their business. But no, they had the grandstand. They had to put them in cuffs because that's what they do. That's what they do. Why? Why not just give them a warning? Why not just... You know, give them a little slap on the wrist and let them be on their way. They didn't because they didn't want to. They wanted to get them used to being terrorized by the police. They wanted to get them used to being fearful of the police. With all that's going on in Washington, D.C., with all the criminal elements in Washington, D.C., couldn't that time been better devoted to going out there, trying to catch a burglar in the act, trying to catch a thief, stop fraud, something. You know, park your car in a conspicuous place on the street to make sure nobody's speeding, make people slow down, do something. Can you do something? Like something worthy? Something that Somebody can look at and find some honor in instead of running around picking on little kids. Better yet, why don't y'all carry y'all useless asses, get your useless asses out there and figure out who the hell planting these nooses all over the damn museum. Now that's a thought, but that's too much like right. No more talk. What the talking about. Yeah. Order, Texas. Order, Texas.